I've made a lot of Mac Pro videos over the last month and there's been one constant between them and that is people leaving comments down in the comment section saying things like, AMD is way better as far as CPUs, you should do a Threadripper instead, or things like, you know, Apple should be using Nvidia graphics cards, they're way faster, or just saying I can build a PC for half the cost that runs circles around the Mac Pro. So today, I decided to put it to the test and I built a custom Threadripper 32 core PC paired with an NVIDIA 2080 Ti graphics card that technically should smoke this Mac Pro and I decided to put them head to head. Now I have to say that this comparison is not fair on multiple levels, both to the Threadripper system and also to the Mac Pro, but I'm going to save that section towards the end of the video explaining what's not fair and why and I just want to get right into the performance. So as you guys know, we have 32 cores here, and not only is this 32 core CPU much more powerful and multi-core in Geekbench than my 12 core Mac Pro, but at the same time, it's actually faster in single core performance, which this is just happening for the first time with the third generation. The previous Threadrippers were slower in a lot of different tasks, not anymore. Now the same thing goes for graphics. The 2080 Ti it scores about 150,000 in Geekbench's graphics test compared to 100,000, that's using both CUDA and Metal, so each graphics card gets an advantage there. Now, I also wanted to take advantage of the Threadripper's PCI Express 4 slot, so the SSD is also much faster as well than what's offered in the Mac Pro. And if you're somebody that's interested in gaming, if you're going to be gaming on the Mac Pro using Windows, the 2080 Ti is just so much more powerful than the Vega 2 graphics card, it's, it's not even funny. And if you're somebody that does rendering work and Cinebench R20's benchmark where all of these 32 cores are pushed to their limits, the performance as far as the CPUs is more than three times that of our 12 core Mac Pro. Now I do have to say that I have a crazy liquid cooling system on this Threadripper build and it allows it to just run at full performance uh, without any throttling. It does get hot and loud, which I'll talk about at the end of the video, but the performance is just magnificent. Now, what we're here to do is to see, does this actual raw performance translate to the video editing side? And the short answer is it depends. It depends what you're doing. So that's why uh, that's what I'm here to provide for you guys the answers uh, to which system you should go for, at least to see as far as entertainment how these two compare. Now I also want to say that I didn't spend fifteen thousand on this Mac Pro. I saved a lot of money by installing RAM myself, and I do have a guide on how to do that. And this also has the Afterburner card, which on all but I think one of these tests isn't utilized at all. And I'll explain in which cases it is utilized and in which cases it's not. So if you're actually trying to do a head-to-head -head comparison, it's more of like about 10,000 to 5,000 for this Threadripper PC. Now, of course, I did build this Threadripper myself and I actually made a build guide on how you could do one, your build one yourself. Even if you've never built a PC before, you can follow the step-by-step -step video and put it together yourself. It does take time and patience and stuff like that, but you can do it if you want to. Now, other than the raw performance difference between these systems, we also have a difference in encoding encoding hardware, and these are specific chips designed to encode video. Apple has the T2 chip, which speeds up H.265 uh, encoding, and also the AMD graphics card has dedicated encoders built in, whereas the Threadripper just has them inside of the NVIDIA graphics card, which is called NVENC, and then it can also use that crazy 32 core CPU to encode video as well. Now, unfortunately, Premiere Pro does not allow you to use the NVENC encoding engine, and their reasoning for it is that the video quality isn't up to their standards compared to the other encoding options. So it does actually give you hardware encoding. I'm just not sure what it's using there. DaVinci Resolve gives you the option to use either native, which is your CPU, or using the NVIDIA graphics card. And in these tests, you guys can see that we're going from 4 minutes and 42 seconds for 4K footage down to a minute and 48. That's a huge difference in performance. And in a lot of these tests, the NVIDIA Video graphics card was much faster. So uh, for all of these results that you guys are going to see, I'm going to, it's mainly NVIDIA that I'm using, but in a few tests, for example, 8K to 4K, it's actually faster just to use a CPU, as you guys can see the side by side, uh, just a little bit faster, but it is there. So I'm going to give the advantage, whichever option is faster, that's 
want to show you guys on screen, and Premiere Pro doesn't use that at all. Now, I know some of you guys have asked to see a comparison of quality between different encoding options, and I did figure out how to actually do this accurately. So let me know if you guys are still interested, and if you're new watching this, you want to see, is, you know, is it worth saving some time and getting worse quality, or how much of a difference there is? Make sure you guys are subscribed with those notifications enabled. Now, starting off with our first test, you guys already saw a couple of these scores. It's five minute 4K. In DaVinci Resolve, we're going from two and a half minutes down to a minute and 48 using the special hardware in the NVIDIA graphics card. But in Premiere Pro, um, it's quite a bit slower using the Threadripper system even though we have way more CPU performance. Now you guys also see that I do have Final Cut scores listed, so this video is not focused on that at all. I'm not gonna be talking about those numbers uh, because obviously it's not cross-platform, and if you're thinking about using a PC, you're not gonna be using Final Cut. Now my next test is stabilizing a 20 second 4K clip. I love my footage, super smooth, and surprisingly, uh, the Mac Pro beats out both in Premiere Pro and in Resolve, and DaVinci Resolve just uses the graphics card, and for some reason, the metal-based AMD graphics card is still about 20% faster. Premiere Pro takes way longer and it just uses the CPU. And here, the Mac Pro's much weaker CPU in both multi and single core is still faster. So that is very odd, but either way, barely any of the cores are being used in either of these systems for Premiere Pro. Now, if you're somebody that exports to 8-bit H.265, um, H.265, it's HEVC, this is a more compressed codec that can either give you half the file size with the same quality or twice the quality with the same file size, so that is very nice. In DaVinci Resolve, the Threadripper system is about a minute faster. That is a really good improvement, of course, that's using the NVIDIA graphics card, whereas Premiere Pro, uh, the Threadripper is more than twice as slow. That's a big difference, and that's you know the difference between having a special chip for that task and not having it. Now, the AMD graphics in the Mac Pro are about a generation behind their newest offerings, so their newest graphics cards, like the W5700X, that's gonna be available in the Mac Pro here really soon, will actually just match up the NVIDIA graphics card exactly. Now, in this test, this is very easy for the Mac Pro. In editing 4K compressed footage, both of these systems have kind of no issue. Uh, in fact, the Mac Pro actually is a little bit smoother. Uh, you have a little bit less drop frames in Premiere Pro just because of metal, I believe, but they both handle it excellently. And when you're encoding, the limitation isn't the CPU or the graphics performance, it's just these dedicated chips, uh, which kind of are holding us back. Now, I mean, not by much, this is still incredibly fast, but that is the limitation. That's why with the Mac Pro, all those results are listing two and a half minutes. Now let's get into something a little bit more difficult or a lot more difficult, and that's C200 raw footage. This is 4K. 60 FPS footage, and in Resolve, it, uh, the Threadripper takes three minutes and 50 seconds instead of five minutes. Uh, once again, that's thanks to NVIDIA graphics card, but surprisingly, um, we're not really using that much of the cores. Only about 36% of the CPU is being used, and I think it's just uh, either a limitation of the codec or software or something, and the difference in performance is about 20% between the two systems. So I would expect much faster times. So here we're not limited by the encoder or the CPU or the GPU. And the Mac Pro, even though it's much weaker hardware-wise, is kind of keeping up. Now in Premiere Pro, we have a much different story. We go from 25 minutes down to just under 10 minutes. And uh, first off, it takes way longer than Resolve, but the difference in performance between the two systems is because of those CPUs, 12 cores versus 32. Premiere Pro does not use the graphics card uh, to decode this footage. Uh, it's just CPU, and in that case, having 32 cores instead of 12 makes a big difference. Now, we have the similar kind of same story as far as playback. And with Premiere, the Mac Pro can play back this footage at full resolution at about 24 FPS. Whereas the Threadripper, as you guys see, 44 FPS. So still not 4K 60, but way better. And that's thanks to those cores. So if you're a Premiere editor, you want as much cores as you can get. Now, in DaVinci Resolve, which will leverage the graphics card, uh, the Threadripper system can actually play back to about 120 frames per second. Meaning two streams of 4K 60 for multicam or four streams of 4K 30. Now, the AMD graphics card in Resolve in Mac OS actually gives us about enough headroom for 140 frames per second. So we're getting even better performance out of this technically weaker AMD graphics card. Next, I took a look at 8K Red Raw footage, 
And with Windows, with the Threadripper, you can actually decode this footage using the NVIDIA graphics card, which gives us a really good advantage. And uh, this is actually is gonna come to the Mac Pro with the next Mac OS update, maybe a couple weeks here, and we'll use Metal 2. But as far as the export times, the Threadripper is fast and resolved, but not by that much, just a hair there. And in Premiere Pro, it actually takes about twice as long, um, just because it can't leverage the hardware as well. And this is kind of a little bit unfortunate where we have a system that has a CPU that's more than three times as fast, the graphics card is more than 50% faster, but the real world results, as you guys see, don't really line up with that. Now I wanted to take a closer look at the graphics card performance. Obviously the 2080 Ti is a much more powerful graphics card in terms of raw performance, but we have that efficiency advantage with metal. So I ran Resolve's the standard candle benchmark, and I got about 18 frames per second playback with both systems. And I honestly wasn't expecting to get the same performance here, and that was just a little bit interesting. So then I also tested out denoising 4K Blackmagic RAW footage, and this is both, both with spatial and with temporal noise reduction, and both played back at a constant 22 FPS, at times jumping up to 24. So as far as the raw performance in terms of video editing, when we actually hit the program with real use, the performance is about similar between these two graphics cards. So no longer can people really say, hey, CUDA is way faster, CUDA is better. Um, it really isn't the case. And I wanted to also keep up this trend with the Blackmagic RAW. I know a lot of you guys are shooting and editing that footage. And so I did a test with some 6K 24 FPS footage, and I chose that because it actually matches up almost perfectly to if you're you know recording 4K 60 FPS, the pixels per second are almost identical. And if we're exporting to H.264 and Resolve, the PC, the Threadripper system is slightly faster using the NVIDIA encoders, or about twice as slow if you're not. And then in Premiere Pro, the Threadripper also wins by about 15 seconds. So not much of a difference. And the common uh, trend that I saw is that the Mac Pro is just using way more of the CPU when we're doing this task and more of the GPU. So it has more efficiency of how it's using the hardware, whereas the Threadripper a lot of times we're only using about 35% of the processor. So I wanted to push these systems a little bit harder. And uh, instead of exporting to H.264, try out some other codecs. So if you're editing raw footage, I would want to master to ProRes or alternatively Cineform if you can't. And that's exactly what I did. Uh, so starting out with ProRes, um, we, with Premiere, you can actually e export ProRes even in Windows, whereas Resolve you can't. So here in Premiere, the Threadripper system is about twice as fast. That's a pretty good improvement, having all those extra cores, whereas the Mac Pro, you know, takes six minutes, 33 seconds. And in Resolve, you can only export using Mac OS on an actual Mac, and in that case, it just, it smokes it. So if you have a Mac and you're working with ProRes, that's where you get the best speed. Obviously, Mac are designed to work with this footage and Resolve is quite efficient. Now, if you're running Resolve in Windows, you can't export that footage and that's where Cineform comes in. And if you're exporting Cineform, I compared them both head to head, uh, two minutes and eight seconds with a Threadripper compared to two minutes flat with the Mac Pro. So uh, even though we have a lot less power, efficiency running on Mac OS, it's actually slightly faster, which is interesting. And Cineform for Premiere, uh, the Threadripper does win by about 25% instead of, you know, I was expecting, it's, it's all CPU based, I was expecting maybe twice the performance up to three times. As far as other bottlenecks, I mean, I couldn't find any, the RAM is not being maxed out, the SSDs aren't being maxed out, everything's working properly. So it just, it is what it is. The last thing that I wanted to cover as far as performance is 8K ProRes. This is not ProRes RAW because uh, DaVinci Resolve can't play back ProRes RAW and Premiere can't either. If you're exporting to Cineform, to compare these two systems. Threadripper takes about eight and a half minutes compared to about 10 and a half minutes. And if you're a Premiere editor, you can export to ProRes. But in that case, the performance is about the same between these two systems, even though neither one of them are using the Afterburner card. And then in Cineform, you'll notice it takes way, way longer. And the Mac Pro actually beats out the Threadripper in this test. It's using, instead of 10% of the CPU, it uses 25. And in Pro and ProRes, instead of using 40% of the CPU, it uses 82% of the CPU. 
So once again, just efficiency um, is kind of what's helping out in this case. And the afterburner, this is the only kind of time it's really using it for this last test. But if you're actually editing and doing stuff like that with AK ProRes RAW, it will really help out. For example, the raw CPU power in this 32 core will play back about three streams of 8K ProRes RAW, and that's if these programs would support it and if it'd be as efficient as Final Cut would. And with the Afterburner, it could do six streams. So that $2,000 card really works well for ProRes and ProRes RAW taking a load off your system. And that's six streams of 8K with the eight core processor. That's really not doing anything. So uh, if you wanna see more info and get more info on the Afterburner, I have a dedicated video that I'll link down in the video description with a, a lot more info. So overall, if you're somebody that's working with Premiere and you don't mind Windows, I personally would absolutely go with a Threadripper build over a Mac Pro. Uh, even though Premiere is more efficient under Mac OS, for a lot of these tests, having that extra performance really does help out and you're saving money. Obviously, that's a factor between these, you know, this comparison here. In DaVinci Resolve, I would I would prefer to run it under Mac OS for a lot of these test cases. Having access to ProRes and stuff like that, better efficiency also helps out. And if you're somebody just working with compressed footage and you're exporting to compressed footage, then you have the option of using the NVIDIA graphics card for the faster encoding. Whereas a Mac OS, you don't have that yet. But if you're watching this a month from now and that new graphics card W5700X is out, then it'll match up. So it's it's a little bit of a toss up here. Now, of course we have this huge price difference between these two systems, but I said it's not a fair comparison. What I really mean by that is the Mac Pro uses uh, server grade hardware. Um, it's more expensive. Intel charges a lot for those chips. The the case, um, the, the RAM on the graphics card, 32 gigs compared to 11. The system memory is more expensive and there's a lot more of it, even though it didn't make a difference in these tests, you know, having the difference in RAM. Uh, there's a lot more cost associated with a workstation PC. And also this PC is pre-built completely ready out of the box to use. You don't have to take the time and the energy and the stress building one. Uh, and uh, it really overall, as far as like the quietness and how easy it is to run and having Mac OS has all of those advantages that a lot of people would be willing to pay for and are willing to pay for and do, even if they're running Premiere Pro. Whereas if you really just care about the best bang for the buck, you know, especially with these new Threadripper systems, you have the option to go save money and get good performance on the Windows side. But we're not using we're not using an AMD Epic processor, which costs more money and has less performance than Threadripper, uh, and actually can match up the amount of RAM that it supports. We're not using a Quadro graphics card, which would double the price of this system if we cared about that and matching up, you know, more video memory. Uh, this system, even with the good liquid cooling, it's loud instead of quiet. Uh, it's kind of annoying, even with you know, the fans and everything matched up in a quiet case. Um, you have windows, you're building it yourself. So that's kind of what you have to deal with the system like that compared to a completely silent machine, even under full CPU and GPU load. So totally not fair, but for the people that say you can build a system for half the price with twice the performance, this is what they're talking about, and this is what we have tested, and um, hopefully this results were kind of interesting to you guys. Now, personally, I run with Final Cut. I love Mac OS, and I have a you know well-functioning business that can support stuff like this, and I know a lot of you guys out there that watch, you guys enjoy nice systems that run quiet and uh, stable and stuff like that, but I'm glad that there's different options. So let me know if you guys have any questions. If you guys have any comments, I wanna hear those out down below. And I have a link to both the Afterburner video and also the step-by-step -step build guide. And if you're interested in seeing some things about photo editing, 3D rendering, and other stuff, how these two systems compare, I have a video on MaxSec as well. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.